And we are retrofitting a North American H5533 actuator. Wider web guides might have this cam roller. Smaller web guides may not have these two extra supports. This is the pivot pin in the back of the web guide. So a spring washer right here. Okay. All of these. Now we should be able to remove the top off. That's what is inside. So should be a set of bearings here. There's a washer right there. Back of this, we're gonna have some needle roller bearings. So let's just take them away and put it on right here. These rollers, uh, bearings. If we need to grease them, we need to grease them. That's about it. And these two are the supports on the either side. We'll just use them later on. Okay. We'll leave this in place here. This is where the actuator is mounted. So this is the old mechanism that they have. There's a motor that's driving a pulley. There's a gear reduction there. And that pulley is actually connected to an even smaller pulley. Driving another pulley that's driving a lead screw. So pretty complicated kind of mechanism. When we go over our retrofit, we'll show you how this is being simplified with our system. We do not need to save any of these uh, drive mechanisms because we're going to completely replace it with our actuator.
And that's the motor. Pretty small motor for a uh, pretty big web guide actually. Now what we're gonna do is remove the lead screw. And in order to do that we need to remove this right here. As you can see, it's got thread lock red on it. So when we put it back, we'll try to make sure to put the same kind of red on it. There's a small cover to the leech from the back, so we're going to remove that. And this is a spring which is used to cover the leech screw so that the dust and dirt doesn't go in. Uh, the spring seems to be in pretty good shape, so we're gonna reuse it for our retrofit. Uh, this is the old mounting, uh, recirculated ball bearings, um, and uh, basically you had the lead screw with the recirculating ball bearings in it. It does require some lubrication and stuff like that, but we're going to go to a different kind of an actuator where the lead screw doesn't need to be lubricated. So, we can take this off and we wouldn't be needing these two. Just put it back in. I'm going to make sure that this is smooth. In this case, it is not, so we're going to take it apart and uh, make sure to clean everything on this and see if we need to replace those bearings in there. If not, we'll just uh, leave it as, it, as such and then uh, put our actuator in there. So this is the um, linear raceway mechanism, seems to be pretty smooth, just wasn't aligned properly here so when we put it on we will make sure that it's well aligned uh, when we install it and then make sure that this moves freely and then we'll put our actuator in. Uh, these things on the end right here, they are basically stops so that would uh, limit the web guide from moving all the way through the raceway and stop at these stops. These can be adjusted based on your need, but for now, in our case, we're just gonna keep it as it is and uh, install the other things. This is the um, servo center sensor right here. Uh, we will replace it with our sensor. So we don't need this one. The other thing with these web guides is that um, they have this 
pivoting mechanism right here so when the actuator moves in and out um, in order to make sure that the geometry makes the web guide move along the rail uh, you need some pivoting and that's why we have this uh, in this part right here it seems like it's a little bit tight so we're going to take it apart and um, uh, check everything and then put back uh, uh, everything so that we can uh, make it run smoothly Again, these are all uh, needle thrust bearings, so a couple of layers of them uh, with the uh, spacers in them. That makes it easy for this to move. So it does seem like just the uh, just the tightness of this was not making it move properly. So when we put it back in, we'll make sure to tighten it appropriately so that it's not hard to move. Okay, again, we are retrofitting a North American H5533 actuator. So, for this particular actuator, we have a mounting with our actuator and uh, uh, just a pivoting rod uh, that uh, basically holds the carriage. So, we have that. So, when you are ready to purchase the retrofit kit, we'll supply an actuator with the appropriate lead screw, stroke length and everything so that you can retrofit this one. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this would be facing this way. And let's put these rods in. Uh, the only additional thing is that these were the uh, shoulder bolts that you removed. Unfortunately it doesn't fit in with our uh, mounting bracket so we would supply a spacer with a longer shoulder bolt on it and we will use that to mount that onto the system right there. And let's go ahead and get this finished. And that's about it. So do not forget to put the bearings. These bearings need to go in here. And we check them out. And these needle roller bearings seems to be fine. So we're just gonna put it right there. Okay. 
This one goes right here. Put this. So right now, just to show you more or less the final uh, application, or all the connections already completed, uh, we're just going to show you that we can jog already with our control. We can jog our our motor in position. Furthermore, if I just place my hand to um, use as a, a material, a possible material, I'll just put it in automatic, and you can see how it moves the whole thing. So. Uh, there you go. It's a pretty uh, uh, easy setup for us. Uh, um, so if you have an old uh, web guide such as a North American and you want to do a retrofit, this is what we can provide you with uh, a retrofit uh, kit. Uh, you can either install it or in some cases you can send us a web guide to us and we can do the retrofit for you.